عادة كنت أقول إنه مثلا شيء مثل كيفك اليوم؟ هو سؤال ممكن أسألك إياه وما أنتبه كتير لجوابك أو كيفك اليوم؟ يعني فيك تعمل اللي بدك إياه وعلى كيفك بس فيني أقول كيفك اليوم؟ وضلني قاعدة وعم بتطلع بعيونك لحتى عن جد أعرف كيفك اليوم صباح الخير كنت ببيت كله شباب كل حدا يضيف لي شيء من شخصيته خمس شباب اخوالي بحب كثير هذا التنوع اللي اخذته من كل حدا منهم في مين كان يعلمني الرقص ومين يعلمني الرياضه في مين يعطيني كتب لاقراها جدي كان هو الابرز هو اللي كان يهتم بشعراتي كل يوم الصبح لان ماما كانت موظفه فما عنده وقت انه هي تجد اللي شعري كان كثير طويل وكثير كنت حبه لانه حس انه طول ما شعراتي طوال طول ما الصبيان بالمدرسه بيتقربوا مني او بيحكوا معي بشكل اسهل أه لما قررت والدتي تتزوج يعني تخفيفا لاعباء ستي لانه هي اللي راح تدير بالها علي راح تقصت لي شعري قصير كثير مثل الصبيان يمكن هي كانت اول صدمه انه يعني بذكر هلا انه شو شو مرقوا معي صدمات هيك فقدان او شيء انا بحس انه في طعم كان هون جدي هو اللي اعطاني هي القوه انه فيها جدوتك تروح فيني انا روح فيها امك تروح بس انت Born in Amsterdam, from a Moroccan father, Dutch mother. Uh, my father he was an artist, and uh, yeah, he just tried to to find a better life in Europe. And also, he was very a free spirit, so he could not really live in in this Moroccan uh, political climate. A lot of things were like forbidden. For um, for people to talk about, to write about, and he just wanted to be free, and uh, yeah, he just tried to search his uh, his life somewhere else. And then uh, yeah, he heard of uh, Amsterdam, that it's like a city and um, where a lot of different uh, people live, and um, yeah, also open-minded culture. So he thought I have to to try it there and then by accident he came here and he stayed till he died. raised in Amsterdam, in the east side of Amsterdam, so um, I grew up playing on a street with children who were already very diverse. Amsterdam East was uh, they had a lot of Turkish people, a lot of Moroccan people, a lot of black people. Um, so I, I grew up with, in, in, within diversity, 
and, and I like that very much. I'm very happy and very proud to be a, a, a man from Amsterdam. Uh, it's the main capital, uh, it gave me arrogance. If I want something, I will go for it and, and, and get it. And it gave me, it gave me the, um, the power to fight. You know, I was defeated when I was a young boy. I, I let people um, break me. And at some point I decided, mm -mm, this is not who I am. And I think living in Amsterdam, you know, gave me the opportunity to go to fashion school. It gave me the opportunity to go to theater school. It gave me the opportunity to, to, to work with a lot of creative people. بلشت اشتغل براديو شهدا اف ام 2007 2008 المورنينج شو كان حوالي الساعتين ونص الثلاثه بالاضافه لبرامج انا بعدها انا بقدمها بس كل حياتي كانت عمليا ضمن الاستوديو بال 2011 حسيت انه هذا الاستوديو مو كافي انا حاطه حالي ببيت من زجاج حقيقه وعم شوف الناس اللي عم تجي لعندي كضيوف فلما نزلت على الارض فحسيت انك تتعامل مع ناس مصدومه عن جد تعبانه عن جد ما بيفيدك انه انت كنت عم تشتغل ومشهور ومعروف حتى هدول الجمل الصباحيه الافتتاحيه اللي كنت استخدمها كنت فكر انه هي بتعطي امل للناس او دفع حقيقه هي ما كانت عامله شيء ما كانت واصله يعني في نص مدينه كامل ما كان واصله هذا الحكي فحسيت انه انا 2011 طلعتني من هذا البيت الزجاجي. Father left for me his um, his artistic life because I studied law. My mom said it's good if you have a diploma because you have a Moroccan roots and it's not easy. So I listened to her <laughs> and I, I finished uh, law school. I was like really searching who am I because I think it's not me this. And I started to take um, singing classes. And then I started to practice more and more Arabic music, Arabic singing. And um, yeah, I think um, unconsciously I just followed uh, my father. And uh, yeah, I, s I still have this Moroccan blood a lot. Um, and now I'm also very proud of it. And Later on, uh, from I was 21 years old, I went to travel by myself to Morocco, Asila, beautiful place by the way, uh, where my father is from. I was yeah, really welcomed and um, even when I didn't speak it perfectly, people say, yeah, you, your father is Moroccan, so you are Moroccan. And uh, yeah, you're, you're very welcome. You have only brothers and sisters here. Yeah, it was a, a big change for me. And then I just, I came a lot to Morocco. Amsterdam has always been open to newcomers and to uh, diversity and inclusivity. So Amsterdam has changed a little bit, it, but 
I think that's normal. You know, a city changes because people change, because new people come to live there, they bring, you know, their stories and their beliefs and... But I think we're doing pretty good as Amsterdam. Without the new blood, there's no change. It will stay the same. It's not interesting. And when you live in the city, you're hungry for something new. You're, you're, you're hungry for art, for music, for nice restaurants. And if that's the same every, every time, why, why live in a city? صار مناطق النظام بهذيك الفترة عشتو عشنا كلنا يعني ما ما عشتو لحالي يمكن البرد اللي بهذيك الأيام لليوم أنا ب... لليوم بحس فيه ما بنسى مشهد كيف كيف ماما طلعت على السقيفة ونزلت شو في أحذية وشو في أشياء ممكن تنحرق بس لتحرقها مو لنتدفى لأنه هي ما فينا ندفع عليها بس لنتحمم بعد شهرين ما في مي وصلنا لمرحلة ما عاد حدا استحى من ريحته إذا كانت مو ظريفة أو شعراته إذا مزيتين لأنه فعلا كل الناس هيك المشهد اللي عالق بذاكرتي من هذيك المرحلة حقيقة مرحلة الحصار هو وجوه الناس الشاحبة كان الكل تعبان تعبان كتير كتير منهك فطلعت على جهة الجهة الثانية قعدت فترة وبعدين طلعت على تركيا بتركيا بلشت مع راديو جديد كان أول راديو لوقت اللي بلش التضييق بلش اشتغلت فيلم أو, أو أكثر من فيلم كفويس أوفر بس إنه صوتي موجود واسمي شوي شوي صار في تضييق صار في اغتيالات بتركيا صار في رسائل تهديد صار في أكثر من حادثة واحدة منها تحت بيتي تم طعن بالسكين على واحد من الشباب اللي منعرفون فصار في خوف فأخذت قرار إنه أنا رح أطلع وفعلا رحت أنا ورفقاتي على أزمير وطلعت بالبلد I wrote a, a book uh, for my father actually when he he passed away he passed away quite sudden and uh, it was a bit of a shock for me and uh, yeah I wanted to yeah to process this in a way uh, because it was really a big thing because I also when I lost him I lost my Moroccan roots I was just someone with um, yeah, I had the Dutch mom and no, no more Moroccan father, so that was really weird. And I wanted to, to write everything I remembered about him and also about the things he gave to me, like in, for example, religion or spiritual way. That is a really big thing, but you never learn about that. It's, it's like you live and then you die. That's what we hear here. And also Dutch funerals, they're very uh, clean and uh, cold also. Actually with my father's body, I took him uh, back to Morocco because I wanted him to be buried there 
in this uh, African ground and uh, a bit warm. Yeah, and there I was part of a big ritual of, uh, of the funeral. And it was, uh, in a way, very beautiful to me. There, was, there were a lot of people and everybody was, was sharing the grief. And that was really, yeah, it gave me a lot of uh, support. And from there, just, I could not stop writing. So I, I, I started to write 40 days uh, for my father. بحلب كنت متمكنة أكثر من المدينة كان في مكان بحلب أهرب عليه بحلب القديمة وأقعد هنيك وأتخبى لما كنت تعبانة بأمستردام كثير مكشوفة كشفتك أنت غريب عنا بشكل ما أو بآخر Los Angeles for a couple of months and um, it was not very different from Amsterdam. It was a lot bigger and a lot more sunshine but um, I didn't I don't think that connects me to the whole refugee um, situation. What connects me is that I understand I think a little bit what it means to be oppressed because you didn't decide for to to be in a war you didn't decide to live in a in a country where the economy is bad you just want to have a good place for your children or a good place for yourself you know or do what you love to do in the world you know so this is what connects me i don't know what it's like to live in a war of course not i've never had to flee my country i've never lived under a dictatorship or or, or anything um but i know what it's like to be told you're not good enough, yeah, you're not the same as us, you know. So in, in that sense, this is the reason for me personally why I um, love and like to work with um, the newcomers, you could say. بعتاد انه بودي فيلم بروجكت لح يساعدنا لحتى نقدر نقدم افضل شيء فينا نقدمه وكفنانين في كثير ثقه واحترام بيسعى مشروع البودي فيلم انه يكون عالمي بدور حول الحب الانسانيه والعائله والصداقه so that, that uh, gives me a positive feeling but still uh, i absorb everybody's story because it's not only fun and making films of course people tell you private stuff and when they trust you, they tell you everything. And that saddens me sometimes, you know, that you were this free spirit, you, you had your thing in Aleppo or in Africa or in Iran, wherever you live. And now you come here and you have to start all over. And I, I, that's painful to, to see. So I just want to do my best, and my colleagues, of course, to make sure that you can continue to do what you love to do.
think it's, first of all, very beautiful that a lot of migrants come here, and I, I wish there can be more. Um, yeah, because I think the, the world is for everyone. And uh, I so also would tell them to really also stay close to their roots, because it can give them a lot of strength uh, while adjusting to, to another culture. I think we were attached to to our roots, even when, like me, we're born here, because um, it's a sense of, of belonging, and that's really important uh, for people. I I really have this um, yeah urge to to go to Morocco, and if not, I feel really I feel homesick. <laughs> And one time I uh, was speaking to a friend of a friend, and she, she was a psychologist, and she told me, hey, you have all the symptoms of a, of a migrant. Because I said, yeah, sometimes I feel really down and, and lost even. Sometimes I, I bike through the city, I'm like, what am I doing here? And um, like rational, I can think, okay, I have my work, I have a lot of friends, um, yeah. Also, a part of my family lives here, but it's a, it's a deep feeling, something really, really deep. And when I'm in Morocco, I don't have to think, what am I doing here? I'm like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah. Lilyom bilawai tabai ana mulajo. Lilyom ana ned. Wala mera ba demhani ino ana lajo. وكثير تعرفت على هولنديين وهولنديات بمجرد اني التقط انه هن عم يتعاملوا معي كلاجئه بهرب كنت انا كنت بادلب صار لي كم يوم فكنت قاعده عندها في بيت يعني هي اختي بيت طالبه جامعه سنه اولى خطيب اختها عم يلعب هيك بالسلاح وبيقول لها بدي قوسك بدي قوسك وياها بتقول له لا حباب ما تضربني فهو على اساس عم يمزحها من ضربها ايدها فيها رصاصه داخله من مكان طالع من مكان والحوض اكلي في اربع رصاصات وباجرها رصاصه فمخردخه تخردخ كل جسمها يعني اي حنون انا اللي كنت عم حاول اقوله حنين انه نحن بدنا فريق استقصاء جوا من ثلاث اربع صبايا بدنا نحدد القرى اللي رح نشتغل معها هي اربع قرى من ضمن معره حرمه هون اشتغلت على شقين خليني اقول الاول هو الكتابه هون مع جريده الفولك ستراند مع موقع دي كوريسبوندنت هو عامل ريت عالي كثير بالقراءه بكتب مقال ثابت ب ابنستي ماجازين انترناشونال امستردام طبعا الشق الثاني اللي هو سوريا بعدني عم بتواصل مش بتواصل حقيقة بعدني عم بشتغل مع صبايا هنيك بالتدريب الأونلاين بشتغل مواد تقارير تحقيقات مواد صحفية من سوريا غالبا بتتركز المواضيع عن المرأة والطفل أو أثر أثر السلاح الفردي اللي صار موجود بسوريا بكثرة على المرأة وعلى الطفل Inside, I can feel how many people pray here every day, as if all the prayers have filled the atmosphere, layer by layer. It's not hard to make contact with my father here. I've watched him so often during his prayers. His sincerity in this moved me. When I was little, I climbed on his back during his prayer, following his movements that he continued undisturbed. The spirituality of my father was not limited to his prayer rug. I saw this reflected in his love and the patience for people and things around him. As a young girl, he took me often on his daily cycling trips. 
The outdoor air was good for him, said his psychiatrist. Despite his heavy diagnosis, schizophrenia, he never got depressed. And thanks to the regularity of his religion, he could take care of himself. Thank you, I pray, that you were my father. بفكر شو بدي اقول لستي اللي عم تتصل وهي بتطول كثير على التليفون وانا بكون لازم اطلع بالباص واطلع بالقطار وبتقطع التغطيه او عندي مشوار او عندي موعد ما فيني اتاخر عليه وهي بتفكر انه انا مو فاضي احكي معها وانا كثير مشتاقه لها بس هي كثير بتطول بالحديث بفكر احيانا بفكر بامي بفكر حقيقة بفكر بالشغل بفكر إذا رح يرجعونا ولا لا شو الخيارات البديلة بفكر شو صار معي بكل شيء بحكي بنهار غلطت ولا ما غلطت بفكر بكتير شغلات يعني مينيموم بدي ساعة ساعتين لنام ما بعرف يمكن بطل خاف يا أه بحلم بطل خاف من كل شيء من كل شيء حقيقه يعني أوروبا بتعطي فرصة أو نمط الحياة نوعا ما هو صح سريع بس الفترة الأولى للاجئ بيكون ما عنده شي يعمله فبيكون عنده وقت يفكر كتير ويراجع كتير شو حكى شو عمل شو اتخذ قرارات وهل كانت صح ولا غلط كتير فانتبهت إنه إنه حياتنا كلها مركبة على الخوف من زمان كتير يعني من زمان لما برجع حتى بعيد اللي بعرفهم كتير قراب شو بيعملوا شو بيسووا بحياتهم كيف بتصرفوا ردات فعلهم الخوف ناهجنا نهج الخوف أنا بالنسبة لي واصل لمحل بيرجفني لما بفكر بالفكر في حال برجع على حلب فأول شي بقوله على الهوا بس اطلع من قلب حلب هنا حلب بس تكون يكون مقطع فيروز ورايا لما بغني اسمك بشوف صوتي غلي وإيدي صارت غينة وجبيني علي لما <تصفيق>